from Boston, Massachusetts, it's theCUBE, covering Cloud Foundry Summit 2018. Brought to you by the Cloud Foundry Foundation. I'm Stu Miniman and this is theCUBE's coverage of Cloud Foundry Summit 2018 here in Boston, Massachusetts. Happy to welcome back to the program, Abby Kearns, who's the Executive Director and goddess of the Cloud Foundry Foundation. Abby, yes. thanks so much for being here. Good morning, good evening. Um, you know, good you've afternoon. Been, you've been uh, running, doing, uh, doing so many sessions here, so uh, we're really glad that we get to uh, have you on to help us wrap up our coverage. My pleasure. What better way to wrap up another amazing day at Cloud Foundry Summit than hanging out with you, Stu? Thanks, Abby. It's, it's a pleasure. Uh, and, like, look, I really, I, I've said it a few times, but I mean it. One of the reasons I wanted to come here is, you know, I get to talk to a bunch of users, and they have great stories. So, you know, it's always cool to talk to the, you know, the startup doing something neat and different. But another thing too, when you know, you talk to the U.S. Air Force, and they talk about how they're doing drastic change. Talk to, you know, T-Mobile. You talk to, you know, some of these, you know, bigger. Older companies, you know, gosh, that's a bad word in the industry, right? You know, but you know, making some big changes. So, you know, take a breath and tell us, you know, what, what your experience has been at the show so far. Well, I mean, you hit on my favorite part of the whole show yeah. is getting to spend time with the community, but also the end users. What's so unique about Cloud Foundry Summit is half the attendees are end users, um, and it's so great to see them all come here and really be willing to put it all out there and get up on stage and talk about what they've done, how they got there, or hear them all fight about, you know, who's the more agile 100-year-old company, uh, which is, has been a, a funny conversation today. Uh, Allstate was chiming in that they were the youngin' in the group at 85 years old. So it's, uh, but honestly, we get really caught up in the tech, but hearing how people are using it, what they're doing, and how it's changing their company is really, I think, the interesting story. If I'm a journalist, that's what I want to cover. Yeah. Because yeah. that's the interesting stuff. And, and I love, we had a media dinner, and we're, we're not supposed to share the details of them, but I love its discussion. This stuff isn't easy. We actually had the customers sharing, you know, the warts, the challenges, the problems, what went well. Working at a big company, change is definitely not easy. Working with some of this tech, it's not the simplest thing out there. You know, we're, we're working, there's lots of projects, there's lots of different interfaces there, um, but, you know, still getting, you know, measurable, great value out of what they're doing, you know, uh, to, to use an old term, moving the needle on, uh, on, on what they're doing. So it's exciting to see that. Um, you've been in so many sessions. Give, give us some highlights uh, from, uh, say, if you've got a couple of examples or, uh, you know, things, things that, you know, any customer story that you'd want to share. I mean, today I heard a lot about Boeing. Boeing and the journey that they're on has been amazing to hear them talk about how they're changing their company and even in fact, they, they ask, all right, we're going to talk about this at Summit, but I don't want to talk about the tech. I don't want to talk about how we're using CI, CD. I don't want to talk about any of that. I want to talk about the culture change. And having user after user say, I actually want to get on stage and talk, but I don't want to talk about the tech. And that, I think, really shows the excitement and enthusiasm around the transformation process and what that means for them. And for me, as a as someone watching this outside, you're like, oh my God, this is amazing. And, and this is such a powerful story to really reflect the role technology is playing in enabling that, but also the hard work that has to come into that. Well, we, we often say that the, the technology is the easy part, it's the people and process stuff that'll be oh, yeah. hard. Um, the foundation and this ecosystem and all the users that are involved, there's a lot of technical challenges though uh, that, that are people working through. So uh, I, I wonder, do, do they underplay some of the you know technology things that they have to, I mean, learning new technologies, learning new skills, some of that's cultural, but you know th th there is kind of that full spectrum that they have to get engaged with? Yeah, well, I you know, I like to think that Cloud Foundry makes it easy <laughs> from the technology standpoint because it really pulls a lot of things in together. But collectively, and particularly in open source, the opportunity exists for us to all move forward together. One of my big themes I'm pushing for this year is interoperability and continuing to let the technology evolve and take an advantage of new and innovative technologies either alongside the platform or inside the platform but really that's going to be a, a big focus and it was so great to hear from a lot of these end users that that's important to them too. Yeah, uh, 
interoperability. Uh, you know, there, there are some that would look at this and they say, oh, they know Cloud Foundry because it, it, that thing that came out of VMware and there's this company Pivotal filed an S1, they're, they're going to go public. But maybe we talk a little bit about the ecosystem. You know, there are so many solutions out there which don't yet have the Cloud Foundry branding on it, but leverage the technologies in there. Yeah, it was really great to announce our eight distri certified distributions for 2018. We've had two new ones join SUSE Cloud Application Platform, and the most surprising one is cloud.gov is now a certified distribution. Cloud.gov has done so much to bring digital transformation to the government. And so for them, and 18 f in particular, being able to offer up a platform like Cloud Foundry and the digital transformation initiatives around that to federal agencies is such a powerful story. They are literally changing our government. And hearing more and more stories like that have been really exciting. So to see the that they now have a certified distribution. So regardless of what industry you're in or what you know geo you're in, you have access to a certified distribution. Uh, the ability to run it on any cloud, uh, for example, Ollie Cloud is now is Cloud Foundry CPI is now available for Ollie Cloud. You can run it on any cloud in the world. And that is really showcasing that Cloud Foundry is not only leading the industry in terms of driving this change in, in these companies and with the technology, but the ecosystem around it is continuing to grow and build. Yeah, uh, maybe share a little bit. The uh, the, the tracks got uh, kind of redone and there's some, some interesting tracks uh, to kind of highlight you know, some of those focus areas that, that you had at the show this year. Yeah, for the first time ever, we had a government track. We had so many government use cases. You mentioned the Air Force earlier, ATF. Uh, we have governments around the world that are running Cloud Foundry. So we added a government track. We had also a containers and serverless track. Uh, we actually added, last year we added a, an enterprise track, which is essentially users getting up on stage and talking about what they do. We added a whole track because we had so many submissions for that. And so it's really an interesting opportunity to talk about the core technology and the platform, what's happening around that, but also more importantly, how it's being used. And really being able to capture that is important for us. All right, uh, the, the, the other uh, kind of metric, if you look at the, the, the growth, is uh, when you talk the ecosystem, uh, there's, I believe it's the Foundry, which is the online marketplace. Yes. Uh, speak a little bit to how, how that's been growing. Right, so we launched the Foundry last year in October at our summit in Basel. We launched it initially with 600 services. Uh, in short, it's an online marketplace for end users to find services, capabilities, and support. So it lists certified distributions, training partners, um, as well as technologies that are available that they could run on or alongside the platform. And since October, we've now uh, announced this week that we actually have over 4,900 services in there now. So it's continuing to grow. Uh, but also, one thing I hadn't mentioned is it is our most highly trafficked web, uh, page in our website. So it's continuing to drive the most traffic because you users care about it, but it's also really an area where we can showcase the breadth of the Cloud Foundry ecosystem. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I talked a little bit with, with Chip about this, but you know, there's not just one project, there's so many things getting involved. You know, maybe give us a little bit of the, the, the philosophy from the foundation, you know, what, what, what's, what's the most important thing and how, how do you, you know, keep growing without you know, sprawling? <laughs> Well, I mean, Cloud Foundry's always had really strong opinions about where we go, and one of the things that we work collectively work together on is keeping a, a core shared vision. So there is a common core where the innovation continues to grow and happen, but allowing space and room for everyone to be able to differentiate from either a different commercial go-to-market or extensibility or extensions. You know, for example, if you look at just our distributions alone, we've got one that focuses on federal government, we've got Pivotal Cloud Foundry, but we've got also an SAP cloud platform and, and really is focusing on changing not only SAP customers, but also the way SAP thinks about software. And so seeing these different variations of the same core technology is also a big driver of the inspiration. It's like so many different perspectives around the table that really can drive and push the technology to do new and innovative things. All right, Abby, want to give you the final word. People that haven't been to the show, uh, there's so much online. Any special things you'd want to call out or uh, you know, fi final, final thoughts? Well, one, if you haven't been to the show, you should definitely come. We have another one coming up in October 11th and 12th in Basel, Switzerland. So if you've never been to Basel, it's a great way to come experience Summit for the first time. 
Uh, all the videos from all the sessions and keynotes will be made available on YouTube, usually within about a week. So anything that you missed, if you were here, you can catch up there. And we're gonna just keep talking about what we're doing and continuing to promote it. And we'd love for more people to join us on the, what the, on the process. Abby Kearns, always a pleasure to catch up with you. Thanks to the foundation again for helping us bring this coverage. All of our content, of course, is always out there. Uh, it will be on thecube.net. Uh, we're talking to many uh, people in the Cloud Foundry ecosystem at many shows throughout the year. So uh, thanks, Abby, uh, and the whole foundation. A great lineup of uh, customers, partners, and, and thought leaders in the space. Uh, thanks to Brian and Alex for helping us do this coverage. And uh, be sure to check out all of our coverage on thecube.net. I'm Stu Miniman, thanks for watching theCUBE.